Joe Biden never ceases to amaze me. By now, you all know that he was confronted by someone who attended one of his town halls and he called him fat, literally. Uh, look, fat, look, here's the deal. Now his campaign denies that he called him fat, but he clearly called him fat. And on top of that, you know, a lesser portion of the story that's being reported on is that after that took place, one of uh, Joe Biden's supporters harassed that individual for asking a legitimate question about, you know, Hunter Biden and the nepotism there. What's your support? Why don't you just get out of here? Stick it up your ass, fella. So, I mean, Joe Biden supporters are fairly Trumpian, and Joe Biden himself has become increasingly Trumpian throughout the course of the, the Democratic Party primary. But I think that his, you know, lurch towards Trumpism, it reached its logical conclusion because he recently said something that is so outrageous that I actually at first dismissed it. I just thought that the headlines were, you know, sensationalist trash and I didn't take it seriously. But having read an article about his quote here, he's officially in Republican territory. Like, I honestly don't think he can defend running in a Democratic Party primary, having said the statement that I'm about to read to you. So as Matt Berman and Needy Prakash of BuzzFeed News report, Joe Biden, he recently said this about Republican Party voters after talking about working with Republican members of Congress. It's not like there's going to be some great epiphany and people are going to wake up and go, oh my God, I'm now a Democrat. And if you hear people on the rope line saying I'm a Republican, I say, stay a Republican, vote for me, but stay a Republican because we need a Republican Party. He later added that he's concerned about what would happen if the Republican Party were totally clobbered. Quote, I'm really worried that no party should have too much power. He said, you need a countervailing force. Now, for some additional context, tell Axelrod of the Hill adds, quote, there's an awful lot of really good Republicans out there, Joe Biden said in August at a Massachusetts fundraiser. I get in trouble for saying that with Democrats, but the truth of the matter is, every time we ever got in trouble with our administration, remember who got sent up to Capitol Hill to fix it? Me, because they know I respect the other team. Such comments in the past infuriated progressive activists who are in search of a candidate who can effectively fight against Trump and the GOP's agenda and argue that the former vice president is naive to suggest Republicans on Capitol Hill are interested in bipartisanship. So let's just try, <laughs> try to grapple with what he's saying here. It's holy shit. He doesn't want Republicans to get too clobbered. He doesn't want Democrats to win with too large of a margin because there needs to be some type of countervailing force. Joe, what the fuck are you doing? The Republican Party is an existential threat to humanity. This is the party of death and destruction. And no matter how corrupt, you know, the Democratic Party is, Republicans are exponentially worse. And he's saying, no, we need them in Congress. They're a great balance to Democrats. Is that so? Because all they have done for more than a decade now is obstruct anything that would help the American people. When it comes to benefiting their donors and giving tax cuts to the rich, they act when it comes to passing even the most moderate reforms, they block that. This party should not exist. They should be defeated permanently. The party needs to collapse and Democrats should become the de facto right-wing party and we need a new left-wing party to emerge to take the Democratic Party's place. Now, that's a temporary solution. I think the ideal situation is electoral reform where we have ranked choice voting and proportional representation. So we get more than just two parties. We get five to six parties, right? But we also need campaign finance reform. But I mean, for him to suggest at all that Republicans are a force of good in any way, shape, or form, 
shows that he is fundamentally misreading the room. The room being Democratic Party primary voters, but yet I doubt this will even make a dent in his numbers because as you saw at that town hall, you know, his voters are loyal. And to even question whether or not he has abused power himself, that's beyond the pale. You can't do it. Be loyal no matter what and fall in line. I mean, I'm at a loss for words here. I really don't know what to say about this because even for Joe Biden, this is low. And that sounds like a cliche, right? You know, even for you, good sir, this is this is too low. But I mean, this really is incredible. You're running to be the Democratic Party's nominee and you're saying you don't want to win too big. You want to make sure that Republicans still have, you know, a relative amount of influence. The level of naivete to think that Republicans would work for you or work with you rather and that, you know, you think they're a force for good. It just shows Joe Biden, he's not fit for this. He is not fit for this. And if anything, if you love Republicans so much, why don't you just run in the Republican primary and challenge Donald Trump? I mean, you sound like a Republican when you use industry talking points against Medicare for all, when you fearmonger about the deficit and how much it's going to cost. You already sound like a Republican, and it seems like you like them more than you like millennials and Democratic Party primary voters, so just fucking run as a Republican and challenge Trump. I mean, what are you doing? If you don't actually have a vested interest in seeing the Democratic Party defeat Republicans thoroughly, then why are you running in a Democratic Party primary? It just... It's puzzling to me. He never ceases to amaze me. The man is a doofus. He's not cut out to be president. And this is why he has lost multiple times. Because Democratic Party voters know that he's not looking out for us. But with that being said, I shouldn't say that because he's still polling in first place nationally. And he has a pretty solid lead in states like Nevada and uh, South Carolina. So he could pull this out. If he wins delegate-rich states, he could still be the nominee even if he loses early primary states like Iowa and New Hampshire, which would be a disaster because I don't think he would win in a fight against Donald Trump. We saw how easily he was triggered by one person asking about, you know, whether or not it was nepotism or an abuse of power for him to get his son a job, you know, so they could buy access to the vice president at, you know, an energy company when he had no experience. So all Donald Trump has to do to push your buttons is bring up Hunter Biden, which he will, and you become unraveled. You call, you know, someone fat, so are you going to cuss at Donald Trump on a debate stage? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. So, the only answer is we have to defeat ghouls like Joe Biden, and we have to defeat them thoroughly so they know that their brand of centrism is no longer palatable to the American electorate, in the Democratic Party especially. Because, I mean... You're not going to get Republicans to vote for you, no, no matter how much you pander to them. So saying things like this, it doesn't win you more voters. It just demoralizes people who you're supposed to be winning over. And he doesn't get that, which is why he's not cut out for this and he should not win the nomination. Beta. 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 Beta.